The Pecos River is the largest tributary of the Rio Grande in the United States. It begins in the mountains of north central New Mexico. The Pecos River is 926 miles long and drains approximately 38,300 square miles. The Pecos in Texas is 409 miles. The flows of the once great Pecos River have dwindled to a mere trickle. Due to the lowered water quality and stream flows, aquatic communities of the Pecos River have been drastically altered. The greatly reduced aquatic diversity has been negatively affected by changes in river hydrology, oil and gas activities, salinity, irrigation demand, damming of the river, and grazing mismanagement. These factors, both natural and man-made, have allowed introduced plant species, such as salt cedar, to dominate the riparian systems within the watershed. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, along with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and the International Boundary and Water Commission, conducted aquatic monitoring in the Upper Pecos River in Texas in winter of 2010 and 2011. Aquatic life monitoring provides baseline data on environmental conditions and helps determine if water quality standards and designated aquatic life uses are being attained. Aquatic life monitoring includes water chemistry, 24-hour field parameters, habitat assessment, collection of benthic macroinvertebrates, and fish collection. The study covered four sampling locations in the Upper Pecos in Texas. The most northern station was near Orla, Texas, downstream of Red Bluff Reservoir. Downstream stations were Coyanosa and Gervin, and the most downstream station was near Sheffield, Texas, before Independence Creek enters the Pecos River. At each of the four stations, the sampling team began by marking the sampling reach. 40 times the average width of the river. In the Pecos River, this reach is about 400 meters long and is then divided into six evenly spaced transects. A physical habitat evaluation of a stream is an integral and required part of all biological assessment activities to characterize the aquatic life potential of a stream. The habitat team, led by Pat Bohannon, measures stream depth along the transect. 0 0.56 4.1 0 0.93 They look for habitat aspects such as what is the dominant plant life both in the stream and on the banks and whether the stream is mostly gravel or mostly silt. The aquatic life monitoring also included collection of benthic macroinvertebrates. Benthics are critters, such as dragonfly larvae, that live in the bottom parts of our waters, such as on rocks, logs, sediment, debris, and aquatic plants. They make good indicators of watershed health and are an important part of the aquatic food chain. Here, aquatic scientist Bill Harrison collects benthics across a riffle using what's called a five-minute kick net method. Scuds and midges and one damsel fly and one freshwater shrimp. No Pretty mayflies. Didn't get a mayfly this time. No mayflies. After collection, a certain number of bugs are picked out to identify later in the laboratory. The team also collects water samples for chemical analysis by a laboratory for parameters such as nutrients and total dissolved solids. Results of chemical analysis are available to the public on the Texas Clean Rivers Program website. Field parameters are also collected. Here at the Sheffield Station, Greg Larson from TCEQ measures turbidity of the river by using a Secchi disk. 
The monitoring also includes the collection of 24-hour field parameters, such as dissolved oxygen and conductivity. Here, members of the sampling crew post-calibrate the multi-parameter sonde to ensure the quality of the data collected. Fish collection included both seining and electrofishing methods. Seining is an active fish capture method that is used near the shore to capture mainly smaller fish and juveniles. TCEQ recommends a minimum of six replicates. The other method of collecting fish is electrofishing, which uses electricity to temporarily stun fish so they may be collected with a dip net. This method is typically used by moving the boat slowly along the shore. In various parts of the Pecos, the depth of the river varies substantially, and in some places, such as this site near Sheffield, a boat-mounted electrofisher was not possible. Instead, the crews had the electrofishing equipment on a canoe and used a shocking rod. For both seining and electrofishing, the crews identified most fish while out in the river, measured them, and let them go. They did collect some fish for genetics testing and others for species identification, also called vouchers. The fish that were collected varied slightly at different stations. Silver sides were common at the northern station Orla. Common fish further downstream included the Gulf killifish, rainwater killifish, the Pecos pupfish hybrid, and western mosquito fish. The station furthest downstream, Sheffield, had the highest diversity and improved water quality. Here, red shiners, as well as large non-native carp, were collected. 562. Previous biological surveys were conducted on the Upper Pecos at the same stations in 1996, 2000, and 2006. These previous studies, along with the recent study from winter 2010-2011, will help the state of Texas evaluate environmental conditions in the Upper Pecos River. The United States Clean Water Act requires that waters of the U.S. at a minimum are managed to protect and propagate a balanced population of fish, shellfish, and other aquatic life. The state of Texas will use data from this and previous monitoring in the Upper Pecos River to determine if water quality standards and designated aquatic life uses are being attained and to develop further indices of aquatic life use for the Upper Pecos River in Texas.